bugs. Can't live with them, can't live without them. Different insects damage leaves in different ways, which results in different appearances of those leaves. The same way that no two human beings have the same fingerprints, no two leaves that are damaged by insects are identical. They have their own signature. When we study that signature, we can learn a lot about a plant, like exactly what insects have been there. Hi, my name's Therim Chukhtai, and I'm an entomologist studying how insects interact with our world. Since 2019, I've been researching how insects interact with our environment, good or bad. And I think to get the most out of your garden, you actually have to work with nature. Even the little guys. That means the bugs. Do your leaves look lacy? Are they starting to kill the vibe of your beautiful garden? You already know that it's some living organism doing that to your garden. The culprit? I can tell you right now that it's probably an insect or another garden pest. Did you know that different garden pests and insects leave different damage on the leaves? And that some of the damage isn't even bad? A plant's condition can say a lot about what insects have been there. No two insects damage a leaf in the exact same way, which means that there's no one-size-fits-all approach to handle all the leaves in your garden. We can take a look at all of the leaves in our garden to understand where the insects are at and what they're up to. So let's say your leaf has chewed, irregular, large holes in it, or it has jagged, chewed edges, and it's also accompanied by sticky slime trails that you notice on your leaf. The culprit? snails and slugs on the ground floor of your garden. To avoid them, you can water your plants very early in the morning, way before the snails and slugs are active. This will prevent them from being attracted to your plants. This is a healthy romaine lettuce leaf and that there is no pest damage on this leaf. It's all in one piece intact. And this is an unhealthy romaine lettuce leaf in that there is snail slug damage on the leaf and we can see it because there's a large, jagged, irregularly chewed hole in the center and also a chewed edge that's about to come off. There's also a particular sheen to the plant, to the leaf, and it's sticky. If you're noticing that in your garden, only the edges of leaves are being chewed, then the culprit is likely leaf cutting bees. The best part about this is you don't have to worry about leaf cutting bees. They're beneficial insects that multiply your harvest and it's only an aesthetic problem. So if you see only the edges of your leaves being chewed, you don't necessarily have to handle that. Skeletonized leaves. So central holes in between the veins of leaves. This type of damage is mostly aesthetic and it's very common in your garden. And if you notice that it's large holes, the culprit is likely a caterpillar, and you can pluck these right out. Now, if you notice that the holes are smaller, the culprit can be beetles, earwigs, or sawflies. These are a little trickier to deal with because they're smaller. To avoid them in your garden, you can plant mint near your valuable plants where you're noticing that small hole damage, and this will repel them from coming and attacking your valuable plants. If you're noticing that your leaves are looking a little sad, they're sulking, they're discolored, and they're bent, you've likely got a thrips or spider mite problem. You know it's a spider mite problem because on top of the discolored, bent, and sad, it's also got webbing. These insects are kind of hard to deal with because they lay their eggs inside the axis of the leaf, kind of making it like an insect sandwich. The way to deal with it? As soon as you notice this type of situation happening in your plants, prune off any infected looking leaf. If you've got an infected leaf or some infected leaves in your plants, for thrips, you can give it a three-day cold water spray treatment, getting cold water and spraying it three days every day. You can do something similar for spider mites, every day cold water spraying for three days, but just make sure you get the underside. We want to get rid of all of the insects. Have you noticed white, yellow, or brown zigzags on your leaves? 
maybe even white or brown strips on your leaves? If so, what you're noticing is leaf miner damage. Leaf miners are insects who, in their larval stage, burrow through leaves to find nutrients and make their way through life. The larvae eventually find their way out of the leaves, so the damage is mostly aesthetic and poses no real risk to your vegetable crops or your plants. If you really want to get them out, you can simply pinch any sort of burrowing or damage you notice, and any alive larva will be pinched out of the leaf. If you want to preventatively plant for leaf miners, turnips are a great thing to plant with crops that are susceptible to leaf miner damage. The leaf miners will be more so attracted to the turnip, and the best part about that is you'll still be able to eat the mature foliage and the mature turnip. Leaf curling is caused by the sucking mouth parts of sucking insects like aphids and mealybugs. This damage will look like your leaf's curling in inwards, sort of in a book-like fashion, in a way that leaves aren't really supposed to roll or curl. Sometimes this will be accompanied by white cottony masses on the stems of plants, which tells you it's a woolly aphid or a mealybug problem. Interesting thing about these insects is they produce sugar out of their body parts and actually engage in relationships with ants where they exchange this sugar, this food, in exchange for protection in moving about the garden. So if you want to address an aphid or mealybug problem, you can equally address the ant problem in your garden. And if the ants aren't around to protect the mealybugs and the aphids, they will naturally subside. So one way you can do that is if you have an aphid or mealybug problem on your tree, you can put Vaseline on the base of that tree so that the ants aren't able to travel up that tree and help those bugs transport up and down. You should see less of your leaf curling. So now we know all about how to identify pest damage through leaf signatures, we can figure out exactly what's happening in our gardens. The best pest management strategy though is prevention, suiting and booting your garden up to keep the good bugs in and the bad bugs out. Join us next time where we'll be discussing more planting strategies to keep your garden as pest proof as nature allows.